Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship you. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. You, Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Re my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship, Father receive my worship, all of my worship, say you Lord, you No one and no one can worship you for me, for all love, all the things you've done for me, and no one and no one can worship you for me. Here's my word, here's my worship, all of my, all of my worship, Father receive my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, all of my, all of my worship, Father Silence. 
say as long as As long as I am breathing, let's lift that up. As long as I am breathing, I will always, I will always no matter what it looks like, worship you one more time. And I will not be no matter what you're going through. always 
No matter what it looks like, forever and always, God, you're so good, Lord, yeah, yeah. Let's say hallelujah, forever and always, Lord, keep your arms around me, yeah, yeah, forever and always, one last time. Give God a praise forever and always, forever and always, forever and always. Amen. We got two speakers on this morning, and I'm calling the first one up right now. Come on, we're gonna keep the praise going forever and always. Forever and always. Forever and always. Come on and give God praise. Look. Forever and always. While she's getting ready, I want you to stand to your feet and point your hand this way. Hallelujah. And Pastor Charles, I want you to pray. And we'll repeat after you. We'll follow you. Lord God. Release your anointing. Release your anointing Forever upon your vessel. Yes, Lord. Sanctify. Sanctify. And fill her. And fill. With a rhema word. With a rhema word. From your heart. From your heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Let's give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is forever and always great. Hallelujah. He's always mighty. He's everything that we need. He's everything we're searching for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making a way, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We cast all our care on you today, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, you increase where I may decrease in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, you God. You're forever and always great. Hallelujah. You're forever and always mighty, God. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end, the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. He is everything we need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's everything we're searching for. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Woo, hallelujah. He's great. Hallelujah. He's mighty. Hallelujah. I just want to take a moment and just give God praise because he's so worthy to be praised on this wonderful morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for moving by your strength, God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be alive today in the land of the living, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just having a mouth to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. And just to talk for your glory. Hallelujah. And to live for you, Jesus, God. We give you praise, God. Hallelujah. You're mighty, God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's forever and always great. Hallelujah, God. He's mighty. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. He's the healer. Hallelujah. The redeemer. Hallelujah. We give it all to him on today because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah Jesus. Yeah. Glory to your name, my Messiah, Lord Jesus. You are mighty, God, you are mighty, hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. 
Yeah, Lord Jesus. <laughs> we cast all our care on you today, God. We need you, Jesus. Yes, God, like never before, God. We need your peace, Lord. <laughs> we need your love, God. Hallelujah. We need it all, God, whatever you got for us. Give it to us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> God, I cast all my care on you today because you're worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're mighty, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke the devil right now because my voice is trying to go, but I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. I command and decree that my speech come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Ekababasaya, Lord Jesus. Every word that I need to speak, hallelujah, Lord, that I can bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, you let it come down. Hallelujah. Let your rain of word send down right now in the mighty name of Jesus like never before, God. Hallelujah. Send your fresh wind right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what? It's like you had to taste and see that the Lord is good because God is good. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Taste and see that the Lord is good and he's good all day, every night, whenever you need him, in the midst of the storm, whenever you're going through what you're going through. Hallelujah. God is right there giving you peace, giving you love. Hallelujah. Giving you assurance. Everything that you need, he has it. Glory, 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 glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm coming from uh, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give y'all this, this word from the Lord because God gave it to me because he so good. <clears throat> I know I have notes and stuff like that, but I'm, you know, sometimes you never go by the notes, so I just go by what the Lord tell me to say because he's so good. Hallelujah. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. <clears throat> Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. When God said he has set you high above all the nations of the earth, he will set you high above whatever your situation you may be going through. God will bring you forth greater and mighty. Hallelujah is he. He will give you everything that you need. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you need. Hallelujah. He will carry you through the storm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. He will. <laughs> Glory to your name. He will set you high above the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. If you be obedient to what the Lord says so. God is going to bless you mighty. Hallelujah. You got to give your heart and mind to him. Hallelujah. You can't be looking for success in certain things or looking for other things to bless you. God is going to bless you the more you surrender to him, the more you give him your situation. God will bring you greater and deeper. You will go further into the presence of, of the Lord like never before. I know because I'm dealing with it right now in my life. <laughs> I was looking for something else. I was, uh, I wanted to start my business and do what I want to do on my own and do all this stuff. And the Lord said, well, did you come to me first? <laughs> did you give your heart to me? Did you give your mind? Have you been salting with me? Have you been seeking my face about what you want to do in your life? <laughs> I said, well, I thought I did. He said, mm-mm, you didn't. Let me remind you of what you need. Hallelujah. In order to have what you want from God, you have to surrender your all to him like never before. <clears throat> In this season, I mean, when I mean surrender your all, I mean surrender everything on the inside of you, every piece of your being, everything that he created you to be, you have to give it all to him. He's going to show you what he wants you to do the more you surrender to his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God is so good. But, you know, I thank him for doing that because even though I was searching to start my business and do the things I wanted to do. God showed me, no, you come to me first. He said, if you hearken unto the Lord, hallelujah, your God, hallelujah, you will have everything that you need. 
I mean, everything. I'm talking about car, house, shoes, whatever you want, he already got it. Anything that you want, he has it. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. But, you know, I, I just realized that when you give it all to him, he will give you the, the desires of your heart. You will be in the land of the milk and honey. You will live in your life holy. You will be doing the things that the Lord tell you to do. You will give everything to him and not search for uh, success in other things or uh, different things that's not going to bless you, you know. Because uh, sometimes, you know, you want f to be famous. You want to be, oh, I want to be this wonderful, this, that, and the other. No, God ain't trying to hear that. He want to hear about you giving your heart and mind to him, surrendering your all to him, hallelujah, in your businesses, in your homes, taking that time out and praying with your kids and, Doing the things. I mean, every time me and my kids, we get in the car, we pray every time. And they be like, oh, Lord. Oh. But guess what? They know what to do. Because when we get in the car, it's prayer time. It's time to give it all to God. Give your situations to him. Let the Lord uh, saturate your heart and mind with his awesome word. Because he's so worthy to be praised. Glory to your name, Jesus. I thank him because even though... You know, I, I was searching for what I wanted to search for. God showed me, come to me, my child. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't just do what you want to do and be like, well, Lord, you said if I can have this, that, and the other, I can have what I want. Mm -mm. The Lord said, come to me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And everything will follow. Hallelujah. In, in, in that order, in that order, it has to happen like that. So that's what I've been doing, and I thank the Lord because the more I've been doing it, I've been really um, spending time with the Lord and just saturating in his love and in his peace. I never had peace like I have now where I seek the Lord's face and get what I need from him. Having that one-on-one -on -one talk with him, having that, just spending time with the Lord, it's the best thing ever. It truly is. It truly is. And, you know, I just thank God. <clears throat> because you have to take your focus off the wrong thing and put it on the Lord and um, just give it all to him because sometimes if you don't take your focus off what the Lord wants you to take it off, you're ne ne neglecting what God put on the inside of you. And God had to tell me that too, so I already know. You know, I'm telling y'all because he told me to. <laughs> but you're neglecting what God has put in you. Hallelujah. God has his hands on you as well as um, as the gifts on the inside of everyone. He, he's blessing you to get what you need, hallelujah, to be deeper in the presence of the Lord. But, but um, there's an anointing on your life, and there's things that you are called to do as well with the gift that he has given you. So never neglect the gift that God has on the inside of you. And um, I know sometimes I'll be like, okay, Jesus, you know. But it's a powerful gift. When the oil of God is on you, let it flow like never before. Hallelujah. Like Pastor always say, let the oil of God flow to you like a rushing wind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you don't want to stunt your growth. You want to walk in God's anointing. You want to walk in God's greatness. You want to hear what God has in store for you. Because he has great things in store for you. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But the issue is you have to walk in the calling that God has for you. Hallelujah. That, that be the thing. When you walk in God's call, calling, it'd be just so awesome. You'd be like, oh, Lord, why didn't I just do that in the beginning? Why? What? I mean, I don't, I don't get why I didn't do it in the beginning. But God had to show you, you know what I'm saying, that he's great and mighty. He had to show you that I'll bring you out of a situation when your back is up against the wall and, and you can't find your way out. And you, you know what I'm saying? I have been in, in a hostage situation before. Let me explain. I was in a situation, <clears throat> and you know how you be bound out in a situation, literally bound down when a person have you tied in the rope, okay? <clears throat> tied in the rope, and God released it because I prayed and I seek the Lord's face. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to be bound down in this house and, uh, and, and, and not get out and do what I have to do because this uh, person wanted to uh, control my life. And I told the Lord, I said, God, you're good because, you know, you know how sometimes people can, I was in an abusive relationship. And th the person, they, you know, they wanted to just, you know, think that they can control me and mess up my mind and make me realize if I do what they say, then I, you know, I would be under their, uh, uh, you know, uh, under their will. 
But the Lord, uh uh-uh. Let me tell y'all something. I prayed in the house for 30 days straight. 30 days straight, okay? I prayed and I seek the Lord's face. I listened to um, Woman Thou Art Loose, um, T.D. Jakes, and the Lord, uh, he delivered me and set me free out of that situation. And and let me tell y'all something. I went home on a bus. I, I never looked back. I said, oh, no, never again. Oh, no. I went home and I said, Lord, God, thank you for delivering me from that mess. You know, because sometimes people be so bound down by their situation, they want to inflict the pain on you, you know. So, but I, t- I tell God, I-, I tell him, I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> you good. He good, real good. He will lose any situation that you in and break you out of that situation and bring you to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what the situation looked like, what it seemed. God will do whatever he has to do with you and make you be just where you need to be in him. You know what I'm saying? The more you seek his face, the more you take that time with him. God will celebrate you and show you that you are great and mighty and that if you give it all to him, he will bless you even more. I mean, I mean that's the way I look at life. I mean, I just keep on moving because God is worthy to be praised. But let me, let me get back to what I'm really supposed to be on. So Deuteronomy 28, that the scripture talks about blessings and curses. You know, and, and the things, if you just be obedient to what the Lord is telling you to do, God will bless you. If you be obedient, did y'all hear what I said? Obedient. I'm not talking about some half obedience, no. Don't be talking about some grace. No, God ain't trying to hear that. He wants you to be obedient to his word. I know he'd he be like, wait a minute, did you, uh, wait a minute, hold on. Let me, wait, what, what did you say? You said you're going to be obedient? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. So he reminds me about being obedient to what thus said the Lord so you know that's what we have to do put our life like that and just be obedient to what the Lord is telling us to do so he can bless us and we can be in the land of the milk and honey and we would be living our life according to what the Lord is telling us not living our life just mediocre you know what I'm saying God wants to give us everything that that we need I mean he wants you to live your life in abundance like pastor said sometimes you have to go out and do different things to make ends meet for you and your family. Whatever it is, God will make a way if you take one step. Like uh, the other pastor said, take one step, God will take two. Take that time out and give it all to him, and he will give you great and mighty things. I know, because he will. I mean, I mean, I remember when I first, I first, I moved in my house, and I'm like, dog, I don't even know how they had that much money for rent. God will give you so much money. If you ask him, I'm telling you, I know. He will give you a lot of money. <laughs> If you take out that time with him and give you, but see, it ain't always about the money, but he will give you whatever it is that you need. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to be like, well, maybe I should pay this bill. No, no. He will give you more than enough, more than what you need. I know. I'm telling y'all, I know, I know, I know. I I tried him many days and I'm like, well, God, you said in your word you was going to do it, but he's going to do it. If you just take out that time and give it to him, God will give you something great. Hallelujah. You don't have to be famous and all this extra mess that they got out going on. No. You can just be living your life the way you are, giving what you need to the Lord, and he will bless you with great and mighty things. But um, I just thank him for doing so many great things in my life, even for blessing me. You know, but <clears throat> let me get back on the scripture. So I'm just keep on throwing off, but I just I do what I got to do. Because that's what the Lord telling me to say, so I'm going to be obedient. <laughs> but um, so it is God's will that your, he wants your business to be successful. Hallelujah. Let me see something else. It says, says the Lord will make your business and your uh, farm successful. So that means your life. He will bless your life and, have, and give you what you need. <clears throat> he said if you obey the Lord, he will just do whatever you, <clears throat> whatever you need if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord. But it is God's will that your business to be successful and um, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. I mean anything that you put your mind to, you can do it. Like my brother right here, brother um, Lord Joe. He um, He's such a best friend to me and I love him dearly. And he's awesome. And um, But his business is going to prosper because he's taking that time out just to take that one step to be a blessing blessing to others and he has a heart of gold and he always you know do things for people but God is so good that he's going to bless his business tremendously hallelujah 
So, but like the Lord says <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 28:3, says the Lord will make your business and your farm successful. <clears throat> so it says, what is that that you have that your hands uh, uh, that you have set your hands to, but you, but you, wait a minute, it says, already going to call it. But you haven't succeeded in it. Like, if, if you have certain businesses that the Lord want to bless you to have, but you be like, well, no, nah, I don't know, I'm going to move that back for a minute. No, God wants you to walk in that. Go walk in it like never before right now in this season. It's so many people making money, making um, uh, different things that they're making. They're, they, they have so many ways that you can make um, businesses or whatever it is that you have to do. If you just take that time out with the Lord and obey the voice of the Lord and um, trust in the Lord, he will show you whatever it is that you need to do. But it's truly based on obedience. <clears throat> when you're obedient to the Lord, God will give it to you. I mean, I'm talking about being obedient for real. I'm not talking about no half obedient. Nope, God ain't trying to hear it. Be obedient to what the Lord is telling you to do. <clears throat> God will show you great and mighty things. Um, then it says, as long as you stay, um, if, if as you stay, when, excuse me, as long as you stay disobedient, you will keep the job you have and make bare minimum in your business. The, you know, the more you keep doing what you want to do, but the more you take the time out with the Lord, God will give you just that and some. So seek the Lord's face, trust in him, and he, be, he will uh, give you great and mighty things. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Hallelujah. I, I, I like this something, this quote that I had. It says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if <clears throat> we think that, excuse me, so if we think more like God, there is nothing you can't achieve. There's nothing you can't achieve. So you have to go above and beyond the call of duty to reach out and grab whatever it is that you need to get. But um, so trust in the Lord with your whole heart and God will bless you and give you great and mighty. So. That, that's, that's the word that I have for today. So it says, you don't get what you want out of life. You get what you picture. So if you picture yourself being in something great and mighty, God will give you that and son. If you picture yourself in, 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 a, in a beautiful home, God will give you that. If you picture yourself in this place with him like never before, God will give you that. You know what I'm saying? So give your whole heart to him and your mind to him. Be obedient to his word. And God will bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Coming up after a hot word like that, I said, hmm. But God got something for us all. Amen. I just thank God because this is, I mean, Pastor, um, earlier he just touched bases and chit-chatting all over the word of God. But to God be the glow. Amen. And um, I ain't mad anyhow because it helped. <laughs> It helped in the kingdom, and it always will help <clears throat> in the kingdom. Well, I don't have to do this for me, but I'm going to go with what God has for me. Amen. First and foremost, I'd like to pray. To God be the glory. God, we just truly thank you on this day, Father God. We thank you for every divine opportunity, Lord, to come before your presence, God, giving a divine word of truth, ooh, allowing you to have your way and to come in like a rushing mighty wind. God, I remove myself 
as you move forth on my heart, as you give me and share with this church what you allowed me to say this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so thankful today. Thank you, Pastor, for another opportunity. God bless you. And First Lady Barbara, Pastor Terry, Elder Jesse, all of the ministers on the roster, to all of you, my God's children. Amen. God got a word for us today, and truly this word that LaShonda have will line up with what God has for me. Amen. And for us today. If you ever lived in the world today um, and existing in the things that we've been existing in from the last year up until now, maybe even two years ago, amen, uh, coronavirus, um, not only coronavirus, but a lot of things that we, that, that, that we have really been having to challenge, amen, that we've been challenged with. And, and, and if you ever knew Jesus, we've been challenged, church, to stand up to the charge that God has in our life today. Amen? There is a charge in every believer's life. And we as a church and as believers are going to need to stand up to this charge. Amen? I'm coming to you today from second no second timothy the fourth chapter and the fourth the second uh verse i'm sorry but i'm going to start at verse one oh my god my voice keeps trying to mess up i'm sorry but i'm gonna get through this devil you a liar <laughs> i'm gonna get through this word because god i got a word for the church this day the word of God tells us that I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will who will judge the living and the dead at the appearing of his king dumb amen verse 2 to preach the word be ready in season and out of season convenience I'm reading a different word. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have an itching ear that will heap up for themselves teachers, amen, and they will there, they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. But you be watchful, church, and in all things endure afflictions, doing the work of an evangelist, amen, fulfilling the ministry. But in order to do this, we got to understand this charge and what was given at this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what was given in, at this time to Timothy. And I'm going to get this through. The charge that was given to Timothy at this time because Timothy was on his journey. Amen. And as he was on his journey, Paul, Paul gave Timothy a charge. And what God wants us to know today, church, is, is the charge about this charge. And the charge at this time had to do with the perfection of the gospel, the gospel work. The perfection, are you ready? He was saying, are you ready? And that we can't take the charge unless we are prepared today, church, to preach the word. And if we cannot preach the word, the preaching of the word must go forth. 
And the preaching of the word, church, it's got to be inward and it's got to come outward. And it's got to come, church, from our lives. The charge that was on his life was a holy charge. It, it was just not only any charge, church, but it was a, church, a charge that come from God. And because he had already been through this experience, he had been changed, trained in his life, he had been in a place, church, and this charge came way before he even came into the earth. Amen? This was a holy charge. This holy charge that is coming upon our life this day, it, it came back then through Paul to Timothy, but it is coming today from God to us. So God wants to know today who's ready for the charge, amen, who's ready to stand up to the holy charge and preach the word in season and preach the word out of season. Are we ready? This is where God, church, is bringing us into the parishion and understanding ourselves in the holiness in spite of. We are living in a time now, church, that we are going to come up against some opposition. And the opposition is going to cause us from our holy calling from God to stand up against the wiles of the devil. Are you ready today, church? Who are you called by today? God is asking us. Who are we called by, church? We have a charge and a call on our life. And in spite of I can't come to church acting any kind of way, but I am called by God. So in spite of the way I feel, I have to line under the unction of the Holy Spirit and preach the word. Not only preach it, but live it. Not a behind a pulpit, but out of my life, church. God is calling us to come to a place, church. And I believe he's talking to us today. And I know it came to me first to wake up, wake up behind this. Thing that we have been experiencing this pandemic it came to shake us up church it came to shake and bake are you ready because God want to know today are you charged by the Holy Spirit and see this calling here he's talking about preaching the word it ain't coming from the outside in but it's coming from the inside out it's coming from a holy life I'm going to piggyback on some of what LaShonda was talking about. A holy life. A life called by God. A life predestined life. Amen? There's a time in our life we got to give up everything, y'all. We got to walk away from it. I had a relationship as well. Glory be to God. And I, and, and I had to begin to understand myself. Because as she was saying, it, he took over. I was so in love of the proper lion and all of everything that he lied to me about. But I opened the doors to it, so I won't give it him all the credit. Hallelujah. But I had to go to God and ask God for some th things. And that opened up some doors in my life, too, to understand that in order to serve God today, church, we got to be ready. The charge that was over Timothy life, God said, the same charge is over our life today. That charge, and this charge had something because it had some motivation. It had some love. And it, 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 it had so many things, church. We can talk about this thing, but he had a charge over his life. Okay, God was talking about these oppositions that we are going to come up against, church. The opposition because of we're standing up for the word. We're not, this is not my word. <laughs> Woo, I give God glory because this is not my word. So we are on assignment. God has us on an assignment. And we got to begin to understand this assignment. Did it take me 40 years? No, I'm 60 something. That's all right. But did it take me, church? in a place to surrender my life, to preach this word. And the word is hot. The word speaks for itself. The word of God 
Timothy was charging him, church, I charge you today. We are charged. This is not because, see, when I gave my life to Christ, I didn't just give my life to Christ. It had something to do with being born again. That is what changed my life. That is what brought through, rang through the real char charge that comes from my heart. Even though we go through experiences every day, God said, but you can't react to those experiences. I don't give you a chance. See, when God does a thing, and when God do something in you greater than we can ever imagine a thing to be, we serve a mighty God. Amen? We serve a real and a true God. And all I ever wanted to be was real to God. But see, first it was all about that ungodly relationship I had. But God began to show me some things. And when I, he said, according to his word, oh, taste and see, church, that the Lord is good. I began to taste of his word. And I began to look the other way, church. And whatever we got bounding us down today and holding us back from this real charge that God has over our life today, whatever the situation is, let go and let God. Amen? Because it's not hard, church. It is not hard because when you trust in God, when you put all your trust in the Lord with all of your heart and you don't lean to your own natural understanding, but in all your ways you continue to trust in him, he will, he will set you free. And church, I believe I'm set free today. I, I think we're going to struggle in some things. I think we're going to struggle today, Pastor. But church, I'm a free woman today. And I want to go out there and share with somebody else what it really means. And not just behind a pulpit, but my life at home. My life on the job. I ain't got no job. I'm looking because I ain't got no job. But I got a job in the streets. Amen. When I, when I, when I, when I speak a word in season, and when I'm speaking a thing to, for God, and when I'm out there, church, we can only imagine the way Timothy was when the charge came across his heart. Because as the charge is coming across each of your hearts today, this is just not something that we just don't accept. We're believers, amen? We got a divine connect. And our divine connect is from our source above. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't plan on saying none of this. But I hear God. I hear a word from the Lord. I hear a word, a hot word from a charge from a master. Because see, the charge came to me first. And now the charge is on y'all. What you going to do with it? Okay, church, what we going to do with the charge? Y'all, we are struggling with some things in our life. But in order to walk in this charge that God has with us, we got to give it up. Whatever it is that's holding you back, whatever it is that's blinding you to what God is calling us to, because God is bigger, he's greater, he's able to do everything, but he has never failed us. And I'm here to say that he has never failed me, church. I failed myself, but God. But when he came in, he came raining. I feel the oil, Pastor. <laughs> I feel the oil, hallelujah, from above that's coming. Preach the word, church. If you don't think you got a word, you got a word. Because we got a charge over our life. And the charge is coming from God. And because it's coming from God, we got to keep on trusting. And we got to keep on believing. And then on the word begins to say, be ready in season and out of season. And the message in the season at all times, even when some might think that they're ready, they're not. But we still can be ready. Because this kind of ready, it don't come from us. 
The kind of ready comes from studying the word. The kind of ready comes from surrendering all to God. Giving God your time. Even when you don't think that you have time. It's 24 hours in a day. What of that can we say that we gave God? God wants us, church. He wants our time. He wants to spend time with his church. What about that charge? Because that charge, that charge that's on our life, church, it's a charge on our life. And we have to stay focused because of the charge. Yes. Not only because the charge is because who gave us the time. It's because who gave us this charge. What are you charged with now, church? What are we charged with? Last night's program, uh, arguing and fussing. What are you charged with? Are we charged full of the word? What are you charged? What is charging you today? God want to know about this charge. And what are you motivated by, church? What are we? Come on, church. Are we motivated by cell phones? Are we motivated by food? Are we motivated by people? Are we motivated by the fad of yesterday? Are we motivated by clothes? I just want Jesus, you know. And so in order for us to stand up to being in season and out of season where God, God is saying, his season is always. He's always his season. But that we're in a season right now. And the season that we're in is will you answer the charge? Will you answer the charge that's on your life, says the Lord? Whatever area of ministry that you're in, I speak increase. I speak the increase, church, to this church, to our church. Praise God. Whatever God is doing here at this time, I speak increase. But the increase comes from above. Amen. I could say this thing, but it's all from God, y'all. What's your charge today, church? What is our charge? There's a charge. It's a real charge on our life. And we really need to take that and meditate it on that charge. Because because uh, Paul boldly spoke charge over his life because he knew where it come from. So you got to know where this particular charge is coming from. And it's just not a natural thing. It's a supernatural call. It's a supernatural call that when I can't move and I can't think right, <laughs> y'all, I have to give God the glory. I struggled over this word. I can see why. Because we have a charge. And God is dealing with me today, church about the charge that's in my life. And standing up for the word, we're going to go through. We're going to go through trial, tribulation, persecution. We're going to go through, but you got to stand up for who you are. And we got to be real, church. We got to be real. So when God did that thing for me, I know he did for y'all. <laughs> Whew. When he saved my life, so I just only wasn't thinking about me. I was thinking about others. But I didn't begin to think about others until I answered the call. So number one, you got to be able to answer the call. Praise God. We got to answer this call. We can't play with this thing because we can go out the next hour and we be gone, y'all. So where are you at in your life? Have you asked God some things, some personal things? Have you laid down some things before the altar and asked God, see that thing? I don't like that attitude in me. See this, what I do? See, I don't mean to give this to you because God, you see everything. And these charges that he's putting over our life, we are responsible. God, see everything we do, church. 
we can say this stuff behind closed doors, but whatever. But, honey, he's going to reveal your truth. Amen? Because we serve a real God. So, see, I, 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 I'm careful about what comes out of my mouth and out of my heart. Because God, when he shows it to you, you're responsible for it. You're responsible to do what you need to do for it. So, church, what is your charge today? The charge. Are you ready to preach in in season and out of season? Are you ready? Are you ready to do this thing? We have to ask ourselves this. Then we got to meditate and allow God to show us because I can say it with my mouth, but the real action comes in, in, in my lifestyle. See, this thing, this is a lifestyle here. He was charged to a calling and it was a solemn charge from God. And when we really begin to really understand about this solemn call and the things that God was saying in this second chat, uh, verse, I'm sorry, being ready in season and out of season, inconvenience. The convenience part, he was talking about you're going to have to correct some stuff, you know. The Holy Spirit is here today to correct some things in our life. And so you you can run, church, but you can't hide. Hallelujah. I like to say that. Because I know he's saying it today. I thought I was running, church, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was running. I wasn't living what I was supposed to live. But, but I'm here today to say I thank God. There's still some other things working on, church. Come on. So we got to give it to God. Everybody know their own situation. I wouldn't be in your mirror, would I? <laughs> and it's not me. It's the God that's in us. Is he in your mirror today, church? So are you really to, ready to take the charge and to surrender? We're going to have to rebuke. I heard my daughter rebuking. We have, I've rebuked some stuff today right here. Couldn't get a breakthrough. The devil was a lie because God had a word for you, church. But he was rebuking. Timothy was rebuking those that were in ministry who was out of order. That's who he was rebuking. And we're going to have to rebuke some people today. And I'm just enjoying this. To God be the glory. We're going to have to rebuke. Amen. We're going to have to exhort. If you see a sister or brother down, exhort them. And there's long suffering, too, we go through in the church. God is teaching us. Jesus walked with long suffering. If you ever look at his life, read about Jesus' life, and then look at Christ's life. Long suffering, because he put up with what he didn't want to, but he still did it. Amen? And he did it willingly. He was willing. So we got to get ready. So, church, I leave you with a charge. Charge from above. Amen. God bless you. Come on and give God praise. I leave you with a charge. Are you ready to take the charge? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and give God a praise. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. We serve a real God. We serve a real God. And the devil has been trying to attack you and take you out, but we serve a real God. Hallelujah. All I was doing when she was preaching and talking over there, she touched on that word real. Real, real. Jesus, real to me. Oh, yeah. He gave us the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. Jesus, real to me. Let's do it again. Real, real. Jesus, real to me. We're getting ready to get up out of here. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. 
So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. Jesus real to me. Now come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Powerful word of God. We heard two powerful words of God from the Lord on today. And I pray to God that what you have gotten out of that, it's going to help you tomorrow. It's going to help you on Tuesday. It's going to get you through Wednesday. It's going to get you through Thursday. It's going to get you all the way to next Sunday. And if you believe that, give God a high. Thank you, Jesus. And that in season and out of season is real. All the leaders in the house, y'all know what she is talking about. Being in season and out of season. We're getting ready to go in a moment downstairs and, uh, to have a meeting. Um, but I want you to do yourself a favor. I want you to play something softly for me, would you, musicians? Um, lay your hands on yourself right where you're standing at right now. Is there anything too hard for God, y'all? God didn't call you. Because your mother prayed for you. He called you on purpose. As you're laying hands on yourself. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the needs of your people right now. I pray for complete healing. Complete deliverance. Whatever the enemy has plagued them with, I declare it's over. The Bible commands us, Lord, your word commands us, commands us to speak those things that are not as though they were. So right now I speak healing right now. I speak deliverance right now. I speak I speak to the pain. I speak to that nagging, that nagging in him. I speak to everything that's unlike God in God's people's lives right now. And I declare that it's being moved right now. It's not getting ready to be moved, but it's being moved off of your life right now. Come on, lay hands. Come on, lay hands. Squeeze it. Press on it. Hallelujah. It's being moved right now. I declare, I declare, I declare, I declare that is over and that is broken and everything that has attached itself to you is falling off of you right now. Those leeches, those blood suckers, hallelujah, I declare that it's off of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that everybody is free. The enemy has held up. It's like Lashonda spoke on the mind and being in bondage, being tied up. Hallelujah. I declare you free from the chains, the bondage of men, the bondage of women. I declare freedom in this place right now. Right now. Hallelujah. I speak a word in season to you right now as I'm praying that you are delivered. And the strongholds of the enemy is being broken right now. I hear the chains falling. The enemy is getting upset because somebody going to leave here free. Somebody's going to leave delivered. Somebody's going to leave here walking into a newness of the Lord. Somebody shout, get out! Get out. Hallelujah. Before I get to the complete benediction, I want to let you know something. The Lord has put on my heart. God says, stop allowing the enemy in. Stop allowing the enemy to come in. Hallelujah. And God said, I demand intimacy. Stop giving the enemy the intimacy that God deserves. Hallelujah. 
So we close the door on that. And I want you to repeat after me, Lord, come into my heart and in my life and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for giving me another chance. I will do better. I will overcome. I will beat this. With your help, I am free spiritually, mentally, and physically, and even financially. Now somebody shout amen in this place and give God your glory. Now, Father, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church shout like you lost your mind. Amen.